addition and subtraction. My name is Wendy DeFoss. I teach at Para North Primary. Good morning, Grade 3. Good morning, man. Today's lesson was addition and subtraction with the use of a number line. Addition and subtraction is very important, obviously, for the learners, but more importantly, before they can even go about doing addition and subtraction, they need to be able to understand the concept of the number itself and why numbers get bigger and why numbers get smaller. Within the lesson today, we initially started with the concrete. The learners were counting amongst themselves initially. 20! And then they moved on to the counting frame, um, where they physically get to touch the beads, to move the beads, to see how the number grows, how the number decreases. And that's especially is for number concept. Now what I want you to do is subtract from that 13, 7. And your answer, Carlo? 6. 6. Okay, now if it's 6, what does your 6 look like? Yes, Christian. A three and a three. A three and a three. Anybody who has something different? Yes, Ethan. Five red beans and white beans. And all together that is? Six. Six. Well done. So if you have six thumbs up, because then I know that you got the correct answer. We then moved on to the big hundred beads and they themselves were encouraged to come and actually show it so they could see what the number is actually made out of. How many tens, how many units. They then were then asked to do addition by adding on beads to that. Let's add 8 to the 12. 8 to the 12 and move your peg. No, move your peg. And now how many do you have all together? 20. 20. How do you know that they're 20, Caden? Because there's 10 red beads and 10 yellow beads. They were asked to do subtraction by taking beads away. Wait, change 40 into 20 and tell us what you're doing. Okay. Will you show them the two groups of 10? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we've got to 20. Now, what last one I want you to do is, Renee, will you please come and will you tell us what do we do to the 20 so that we'll have two left? Yeah, to minus the 20. You get to minus the 20, the whole 20, to have two left. Not the whole 20. No. How much are we going to take away? We're going to take away um, eight. Um, um, 18. 18. Okay, let's see if you're right. And how many is left? Two. Two. And you took away? 18. 18. Okay, thank you. Children were also encouraged to use what we call the ZAM cards together with the flawed cards, which is broken up into units, tens, and hundreds. So they can use those cards to, to break down numbers and to build up numbers as long as they know the place value of each number within the number. Now what I want you to do is to change that 7 into 17. How do we change, what are we adding on to that 17? Another 10. So how many groups of 10 do we have? One. One group of 10. Will you show me, Peter, where is the 10 that we have? We also did the jumping activity, um, a jumping exercise where they were asked to either count on by jumping or to count back also by jumping and for them to physically feel the fact that if they jumped forwards they were increasing the number and if they jumped backwards they were decreasing the number. How many jumps are you going to jump back? Four. Off you go. One. Two. And what does he land on? What do you land on? Number six. Is it correct when I say ten minus four equals six? Yes. Is it right? Thank you very much, clever boy. Also with the number lines, once we had done that, they were also given the thing where they could write on a number line. Um, so it, it slowly went from a big number line to a far smaller one for them to work on. And will you now count on for me five jumps? and write down where you will be. From 20, add on another five jumps in 10 and tell me where you'll at. And where they could discuss what the different um, gaps in the number line were, whether they were individual from one to two or whether they were marked out in groups of 10. Where will you find 62? 
And then just to reinforce the fact that numbers are, are different place values, they were also asked to build the numbers using blocks. So for instance, 23, they had to pack out two, um, two groups of 10 and three units. And then I gave them, for instance, 23 plus 15. So they had to build two sets of numbers, the 23 and the 15, and then they had to combine the two to give me the answer at the end. So what's 11 plus 32 equal to? 32 plus 11 will be? 43. And what does 43 look like? Four groups of 10 and three groups. Clever boy. So once the learners had, uh, had practiced that, we also then went to completely abstract, where they didn't have to use any apparatus at all to help them or to assist them in any way. And various sums were written on the board, both addition and subtraction, and they were asked then to give the answer. But it's very important that when they give the answer, they need to understand how they got to that answer. So each learner, once they had given an answer, was asked to explain exactly what they did. The last step, what did she do, Lissangu? She made a 60 plus 20. Is that a 60 plus a 20? 6 plus 20 is 60. 6 plus 2 and that is equal to? 8. 8. It's also essential not to go into big numbers straight away. So you'd work first the numbers equal up to 10 first before those are really well established and then up to 20 and then to move further than that. They've got to keep on practicing with apparatus. It's important also to use as many different kinds of apparatus for them. And one of them of course being the number line, which is wonderful um, to be able to use that. And for them to explain how they use it um, themselves Sometimes we find that uh, we tend to say how they should do it and they don't always understand how we want them to do it. Ah, oh, can we do this sum? One minus eight. No. no, but can we change those numbers around? No. So can we do one minus eight? Yeah. No. What are we going to do? If we don't have enough, what do we have to go and do? Yes. What do we do, Caden? Clever boy. We borrow. If you allow them to explain how they got the answer, it's far more meaningful for them.